Tane is in damage control next week, after his attempt to swiftly move on from estranged wife Felicity saw him plant a kiss on friend Harper. Relations between Tane and Flick have improved recently following their split, with the two even sharing a couple of charged moments. When Tane saw Flick descend the stairs at Salt, dressed up to the nines for the Salt by the Sea fundraiser, Tane was blown away. He told Flick that she looked great, and forgot himself as offered out his arm to walk her to the event. Flick hesitated and Tane quickly righted himself. Flick was hurt when Tane subsequently spent the evening laughing and talking with Harper at their table, and made a hasty exit. Tane followed her into Salt and she explained that whilst she's trying to move on from their marriage, she keeps getting confused by his pleasantries towards her. Tane assured Flick that it was because he still cared about her, and that he was still struggling himself, which raised her hopes once again. Tane soon shot down her idea that they could work things out however, by telling her he wasn't there to go backwards. As Tane later told Harper that he felt he had gained a sense of closure following his conversation with Flick, Flick removed her wedding ring and stashed it away in a box with her wedding photo and Cora Y, the feathered Maori cape Tane presented to her on their wedding day. Tane apologized to Harper for always talking about his failed marriage, but as she told him she valued his friendship, Tane took things the wrong way and kissed her. Next week, despite Harper admitting that Tane is one of the only friends she's made in Summer Bay so far, she believes that it's best they keep some distance. Dana, Ally Harris, is keen to hear all about how it was to be kissed by the hunky personal trainer, but all Harper can concentrate on is how it could affect their friendship, and certainly has no interest in being a rebound fling for Tane. Both Harper and Tane end up confiding in cash, Nicholas Cartwright, with Tane ashamed that his actions may have ruined things with Harper. Unsure of how he can fix things, Tane agrees it would be best to give her some space. Handing over the contact details for a new PT, Tane also offers to refund her gym membership saying that he needs some time to get his head straight, leaving Harper conflicted. Later in the week, Felicity is faring better when she and Eden, Stephanie Panazzo, are invited by Mackenzie, Emily Ware, for a girl's day out at the farmhouse. Eden observes that it must be strange to be at the house where her soon-to-be ex-husband now lives, but Flick is no longer phased by it. Seeing the progress her friend has made, Eden makes the bold suggestion that Flick should get back out on the dating scene. Flick's throne, it's certainly not something that had crossed her mind so soon after Tane. As sheer coincidence would have it, it's not long before an opportunity presents itself, when a customer named Matteo leaves his number written on a coaster in salt, addressed to Flick. Both Eden and Flick agree it's strange timing, but Eden thinks she could give it a go, it could be fun. But as she goes into the storeroom to dial the number, Flick has a rush of panic and hangs up quickly before anyone can answer. Flick rushes outside to get some air, with a concerned Xander following. Now having a full-on anxiety attack, Flick explains to Xander that she thought she was ready to at least try moving on. Xander holds her as she begins to break down. Will Flick ever get over Dane? Meanwhile, the day finally arrives for Cash's suspension review. Cash was suspended from the police force after it emerged that he had assisted Harper in hiding Dana whilst she was on the run from corrupt cop Will Madden, Johnny Pizvolsky. Although Dana has been absolved of any wrongdoing, and both Irene, Lynn McGranger, and Harper let off for their part in assisting a fugitive, the police seem intent on making an example of Cash, perhaps to make up for their own mistakes. Cash had planned to attend his review a few weeks back but got held up when Mackenzie rather inconveniently collapsed in salt. Cash's bosses weren't too impressed when they were told by Rose, Kirsty Marillier, why Cash hadn't been able to attend, if the medical emergency wasn't his own, then there was no excuse. After returning from his meeting in the city, Cash tells Eden that he hasn't heard a final decision yet, but he's feeling optimistic about returning to his job. But when Cash finally hears back, the news isn't what he was expecting. Whilst the force are indeed offering his job back, he will be demoted from senior constable and placed on restricted duties. Before Eden can even ask how Cash feels about it, he tells her that he's already given them a reply, 